of Courage. Time now for your forewarn weather with Chief Meteorologist Alana Brophy. All right, switching gears now for another check of that forecast. Ominous skies throughout parts of the day today, Alana. It was also the hottest day of the year. Oh. Sh I know, shocker, <laughs> I surprised you, saw it on your faces. <laughs> yeah, we had those storms out there, severe storms tracking through the West Desert. Those thunderstorms moved through the Wasatch Front, but we saw the warnings in Tooele County. Great video coming out of South Jordan. Chris Williams catches that lightning. Get ready for it. Ooh, an electric night. We still have lightning out there at this hour with a few storms holding steady in portions of northern Utah. The radar gives us a really good idea of where that's happening. Showers on the eastern side of the state. Isolated activity for I-15. We zoom in. What was in Magna now moving towards Davis County, impacting Bountiful and Layton. The mountains also getting a few showers as our storm tracker radar sweeping the region. Over towards Duchesne, over 40 and then in eastern Utah, and then some lightning down towards Beaver County and over the mountains near Grand Staircase. So some nocturnal storms as we head into the overnight will linger and then eventually clear, but it was an active day. So we had a rainbow, we had sunset, and we had storms coming out of Magna. Amazing video caught by Scott Taylor tonight. So as the day went away, well, we still had weather phenomena happening. Great video there, Scott. Thank you. So we have this area of low pressure that's from the desert southwest. It's got a counterclockwise flow, and it's just funneling moisture into the state. We capitalized on that today. What you're seeing here, the white arrows showing that southerly flow, helping to crank our temperatures. And you watched how those storms blossomed in just the last two hours. Eastern Utah, hotbed of activity where we have seen that moisture and continue into tomorrow to see that. High temperatures tonight, 91 in Salt Lake, hottest day of the year, and then we dropped quickly as those storms moved overhead. Now we typically see temperatures above 90 degrees by June 3rd in Salt Lake City, so we're close to that average. 84 in Logan, 88 in Provo, upper 80s in Moab, 93 in St. George. We were only trailing St. George by two degrees, and that is the southerly flow at work. Now we had a marginal risk for our thunderstorms today, but that changes into tomorrow with the north Northern half of the state in eastern Utah underneath that general thunderstorm threat. You still have to keep your eyes to the skies, but we are not expecting severe storms like we saw today. Our flash flood potential, it decreases for some of the mighty five, including Zion, Bryce, Capitol Reef, down towards Lake Powell. Now the swell, arches, and canyon lands still keep that possibility because we have the potential of storms in those areas. Flood alerts, something to touch on here. Flood warning for the Bear River near Woodruff Narrows and a flood advisory for the Severe River near hatch. That's actually a downgrade. They've been under a warning and now they're underneath an advisory. Minor flooding still happening. Future cast showing you what to expect. We warned you about the storms today and we have storm potential tomorrow. As you can see, eastern Utah tonight staying active for the overnight. We quiet down maybe just some isolated activity over Powell as we head into tomorrow afternoon. The Wasatch Front, Cache Valley, Wasatch Back, southwestern Wyoming and eastern Utah will stay active. We'll see those storms bubbling up yet again. It's going to be more isolated isolated in nature. Today it was scattered, so tomorrow is going to be similar to Monday, where we're going to see a few storms, mainly over the higher terrain, but some of those could roll into valleys. By 5 p.m., isolated for the Wasatch Front in central and northern Utah, and then the eastern side of the state staying pretty active. As we roll into Thursday, it's just a slight chance of storm potential, but notice here on the future cast, the timing by the afternoon over the mountains yet again in Utah County, up towards the Wasatch, Cache Valley, and then the central portion of the state. So don't be surprised if you see a storm bubble up on Thursday, but we're drying out ever so slightly. Those winds allowing for drier conditions in the southwest corner of the state. We can't eliminate the chance of a storm as we get Thursday through the weekend. That slight chance holds steady. Sunday and into Monday, things start to change. Temperatures for the overnight in the 50s and 60s. We're going to slightly cool into tomorrow with the low to mid 80s expected. Notice how those temperatures in St. George will be in the upper 80s. The upslope wind actually cools Washington County. Find your city, 70s for our mountain valleys, 80s along the Wasatch Front, the central portion of the state in the 70s, and down south, stepping away from the 90s with the upper 80s in Washco and 80 degrees in Kanab. Here's a check on what to expect for St. George. The 90s do make a comeback and so do the chance of storms by the weekend and into next week. Wasatch Front keeps it interesting. Scattered to isolated storms for tomorrow. Slight chance through Saturday and then we get another low in the desert southwest. Do I sound like a broken record? That seems like monsoon season, but no. We'll see thunderstorm activity Sunday and into next week. No, it's not the monsoon. That's monsoon on too soon, so don't get thinking that that's the route we're going. Glenn, Emily, over to you. Thank you, Alana.